Hey guys, why you need a database, server, and frontend, and when you don't need one, and what each piece is doing, because there's lots of different ways to make web apps. So I want to explain why different pieces are necessary, and when you should use them, and when you shouldn't. So I want to first start off with, um, because you don't have to make a website with React or Angular or any other uh, JavaScript, um, right? Uh, what is it getting you React here? Um, because uh, I'm using Express, I could be using something like this, static files, and I just have a bunch of HTML files, I'm written low.html, right? And the reason I'm using, and also by the way, you can serve static files too. So, but why am I using JavaScript basically, um, and using React? And the reason for that is it just adds a ton of interactivity to the uh, users. Uh, they can just do a lot more stuff. Which I really like that. So it seems really nice when you're making a advanced web application with lots of different functions and stuff. So that's what I really like about React. Easy to do that, and yeah, that's why React is being used. But you don't have to use React. If you want more static content that you don't need a lot of the user, you know. Uh, clicking on buttons, doing different stuff, then you could just do HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. You don't need React. React is for when you want to do heavy JavaScript, right? Or a lot of it. So that's why I, I am using React. Now, what about Express? Why do I need a server? Ugly. Um, actually, let's explain why you need a database first, because this will make more sense. So basically, a database is to persist data. Um, so the way you could persist data without a database is use some, using some like local storage, um, which uh, I'll, I'll show you. So why not? So if you go inspect here, you can go to application. Let's close this, um, and you can go to local storage, and you can see um, how you. It's kind of like a dictionary, and you can store stuff in here um, for that just for a single user. But you can't sell storage. That's why a database is good, and database is good central storage, right? Uh, local storage is on everyone's computer, a central thing, so you can query across lots of users. That's why databases are good. And one thing you could do, actually, it's not a server's not necessary for things. You could just have, um, you know, your front end base. You don't technically need a server, right? Um, Technically, you don't need a database either, unless you want to persist stuff. If I have a user that wants to, you know, we're saving a history and they use the site. Databases are great. You should put data in it. They're good. But okay, but let's get into this. You don't actually need to just directly connect with your uh, to your database. You react. Why don't people do that though? One reason is, uh, and I think this is the main reason. I could be wrong though. Is when you you can look at like I can expect this thing right here HTML here and I forget what it's under I think it says there it is and you can actually see the JavaScript that's on this uh, page that's getting run so if I were in my database from just the client from React from the front end then I would have to put my credentials on the client so then anyone could go look at my my credentials are to the database and then they could go and change the data, corrupt the database, do whatever they want. So that's bad, right? You don't want guess that's when a server comes in. That's why a server is very useful for other things as well, which we'll get into. Um, but one big really protects your credentials, right? So now React is the key, you know, the access the database. Now you have this other layer of protection, which is your server. It's there and protects it. So now your server talks to the database, React talks to the server, and the server talks to the database. That's just any data that, that React wants and feeds it back. Um, and that's what GraphQL, it just makes it easier for the uh, React. And I'm going to get into exactly how these guys talk to each other in the next video, but I just wanted to go over real quick why each piece is necessary. And so thing four is if I want to run background tasks, um, for example, uh, maybe I want to do something that takes some time. Uh, the client side, you want to run it on the server. That way, the user can see your application while this background job is being run. Um, important note: servers. When you're doing React, it's all running on the person's server. It's running on your, your whatever computer you choose. You get to choose the server that it runs on. 
So uh, and a server is just someone else's computer, right? Like when you go to AWS and make an account and create a EC2 instance, or if you go to Hero, that's literally just running uh, on someone else's computer your code. So servers are good for basically two things, right? I've used them for is protecting your database and you know format it back to React, um, and then to tasks that you want to run. So those are the big GraphQL. This just makes it easy for the server and React to talk. That's it for this video, guys. Next video, I want to go over how exactly are, is this database talk, server talking to React and how that works. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.